Hello and welcome to a new Envato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordilla and in today's video you'll learn everything you need to get started with JavaScript event listeners. Now these are some of the most used JavaScript structures in web design because they allow us to add interactive functionality to HTML elements. And in this tutorial, you'll learn what event listeners are all about and also three ways uh, you can use to uh, create them. In the end, uh, we'll build a simple demo that will show you how to use JavaScript and CSS to create a simple hide reveal functionality. Before we start, please note that this is a video version of a tutorial originally written by Anna Monas. Uh, she did a fantastic job explaining JavaScript event listeners. So if you want the written version, you can find the link below. Now let's get started by learning what are event listeners. As the name suggests, event listeners allow us to listen to events that are taking place in a web page. For example, when you click a button or when you press a key. When that happens, we can execute a command. For example, on a mobile device, when we tap a menu icon, we can open a menu window. Now, as you can see in this page on uh, MDN, there are lots of events we can listen for. Error, load, focus, submit, resize, click, key press, mouse over, and so on. But probably the most common ones you might want to listen to or for are click, load, mouse over, or key down. So now that you know what event listeners are all about, uh, let's learn how to create one. And there are three ways uh, we can do that. Let's look at each one. The first method is by using uh, HTML's global on event attributes. And this is best used when uh, you want to add a single uh, or a one line script to a single HTML element. So let me show you an example. Let's create a simple button here. And the one line script we're gonna add looks something like this. We're gonna say on click equals, and we're going to type our command. In my case, let's just uh, do an alert. And we're going to say, hello, you clicked me. All right, so with that, when we click this button, we get an alert from the browser window. It's that simple. This is what we call a global on event attribute. And there are a couple more that you can use. In fact, there are a lot more. You have on abort, on cancel, and I'm just uh, giving you some examples here. On key down, on key press, on mouse wheel, when you use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down. So these are all on event attributes that you can use on a single HTML element. Now, if you want to do the same thing to multiple elements, you would have to write this code to every single one of them. Now, the way these um, on event attributes work is very simple. For example, this on click listens for a click event on this button. When the event fires, or when we click the actual button, we execute this callback function. And that's it really. Now, as I was saying, this is best suited when you want to add this uh, interactive functionality to a single element. If you want to add it to multiple elements, then you need to look at um, another way of adding event listeners. Or of course, you can uh, add this directly to, uh, to HTML to every single element, but that's not very elegant. It's not very efficient. In terms of uh, browser support, it really depends on what event you're going for. Uh, for example, on click is supported in all modern browsers starting with IE9. But uh, on drag, for instance, is supporting starting IE10 
and above. And you can easily uh, check out the browser support by going to can I use and typing global event handlers. And you'll find uh, the full list right here. The second way of creating an event listener is with jQuery's event method. And there are quite a few of these you can use. Let me show you an example. First of all, you can go to uh, jQuery events in the API documentation here, and you can see all of the uh, event methods you can use. Uh, to give you a very simple example, uh, I have these five buttons here, and I want to execute a command when I click any of these five buttons. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is open up the JS tab. I'm going to load jQuery, and I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to select all of the buttons, and then I'm going to say click, and I'm going to execute a simple function. And in here, I'm just going to say alert, hello. So now you'll see that when I click any of these buttons, the callback function is executed. And this is what you need to do when you want to add the same event listener to multiple elements. Now, because as we all know, jQuery is a library that sits on top of the native uh, JavaScript, its uh, event methods actually target the same events as uh, the global on event attributes we covered previously. But it also has some uh, unique event methods like hover and on. Hover is activated when you hover on top of the element. And on is actually very interesting because the on methods allows us to attach one or more events to the same callback function. So for instance, instead of button dot click, I can say button on, and I'm going to pass in another parameter here, apart from the callback function, and I can say click. But I can also say, for example, mouse over, right? So now you'll see that when I uh, move my mouse cursor over the button, the function is executed. But it'll also be executed when I click on the actual button. Of course, now uh, we have this modal window popping up. But if we change this with a console log, and we open up the console, you'll see that when I hover, there it is. The callback has uh, been executed. Again, and again, click. See? So the on method is actually really good for when you want to attach more than one event listener to a callback function. The third way of listening to uh, events is by using the add event listener method that's available in, van in vanilla JavaScript and is also supported by all modern browsers. Uh, because this can run natively, which means we don't need any extra library on top of it, uh, it's the preferred way of doing things. And it's also the best in terms of performance. Here's how it works. I have the same five buttons added uh, to my page, and I want to add an event listener to all of them. So I can start by doing this. We're going to select the DOM element, and we're going to define a constant for that button equals document query selector button. Then we'll define our callback function. So function, let's say alert button. And we'll simply set an alert. Hello. And then finally, we're going to add the actual event listener. And we're going to say button add event listener. We're going to specify which event we're listening for. In our case, it's going to make click. 
and then we're going to specify the callback function. In our case, it's alert button. And the third parameter is use capture. In our case, we'll set this to false. So now, when we click this first button, it's going to say hello. So we're successfully listening to the click event. But when we click on the other buttons, it doesn't work. Why? Because query selector only selects the first button in our case. It doesn't select all of them. So to select all of them, we need to make a few changes. Uh, we're not going to select a DOM element. Instead, we're going to select a DOM node list. We're going to use query selector all, and this will return a node list with all of our buttons. And when it comes to adding the event listener, uh, we're going to be doing a for loop. So for, we're going to do it like so. And the code here is basically the same. So what we're doing here is we're going through the entire node list or the entire array of buttons. We're taking each instance in the button variable, and we're adding the event listener to it. And here it actually needs to be buttons and buttons here. Okay, so now you'll see that when I click on each button, we're successfully listening for the click event and we're executing the callback function. So again, we're grabbing all of our buttons into a node list using query selector all. And then we're doing a for loop and we're adding the event listener to each button in that node list. Now, what's up with this false, this third argument? This uh, allows us to specify whether or not to use bubbling or capture when uh, doing event listeners. I'm not going to go over what that means right now. Uh, you'll find the link in the written version of the tutorial that will explain this in more depth. But usually you would uh, be setting this to false. There are uh, a couple of unique cases where you would need to use capture instead of bubbling. So this is the third and actually the preferred way of um, adding JavaScript event listeners. Now let's put this knowledge to a good use and create a very simple demo of what you can do with event listeners. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we'll be creating a simple uh, hide reveal demo. So let's begin. In terms of HTML, I'm uh, going to add a button and I'm going to give it a class of, let's say, toggle. And then I'm going to add a section. And for content, just uh, some random text. And the idea is when I click this button, this text will be or the visibility of this text will be toggled on and off. For CSS, we're uh, just going to add this uh, very simple um, styling. It doesn't really matter. And now let's get to the JavaScript part. And we'll do the following. First, we'll uh, select the DOM elements, and we're going to define two constants here. Uh, the first one is button, and that's going to be equal to document query selector, and we actually called it uh, toggle. Of course, how you name these is really up to you. It doesn't really matter. And let's define another constant for the section. So that's going to be document query selector section. Now let's define the callback function. So we'll do function. Let's call it toggle section. And let's go ahead and write the uh, event listener. So we'll say button dot add event listener on click. We'll call or we'll execute toggle section and we'll set false for our third parameter. All right, now for the function, it's really simple. We'll do a simple check if section dot 
class list dot contains we'll call it uh, visible then section class list remove visible else section class list add visible so it's really that simple let's see if we get any uh, errors in here when we click this it all seems to be uh, going just fine now let's go to the CSS part and let's add those classes so section uh, it's actually right here let's set a display to none by default and then section with a class of visible we're going to do a display to block so now you'll see that when we click this button we can toggle that section's visibility on and off so going back to the uh to the code here it's a really simple callback function all we're doing is checking whether or not our section contains or doesn't contain a class. We do that with the class list. So class list contains returns true or false if we have that class attached. If it has the class, we remove it. If it doesn't have the class, we add it. It's very simple. So those are the three ways you can add event listeners. Number one, by using HTML's global on event attributes. Number two, by using jQuery's event methods. And number three, by uh, using the add event listener method available in native JavaScript. All right, and that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'm Adi Purdila, and until next time, take care.